Hi, third graders. Today we are going to be doing some review with place value drawings. Once we get started, you'll probably remember doing these in kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. Your first learning target today is I can make and interpret place value drawings. The word interpret means that you are able to read place value drawings as well as make them. Your second learning target is I can build and break down multi-digit numbers. Multi means more than one. So if it's a multi-digit number, it's going to have more than one number. All right, let's get started with a dot drawing of 76. If I was going to draw 76, it sure would take me a long time to circle all of those 76 dots. So I'm going to think of a number a little bigger than one dot to circle. Do you have any ideas, Mrs. Sluzowitz? I know that it's easy to count by ten, so I think if you circle ten dots at a time. All right, let's try that. So I'm just going to make a big bar around those dots. So I have ten, twenty, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 70. If you do another group of 10, we're going to be at 80, and you're only supposed to draw 76. Mm -hmm. So maybe you should just circle now one at a time until we get to 76. That's a great idea. So we have one... Two, three, four, five, and six. So how can we check to make sure that we have drawn 76 correctly without counting each individual dot? Hmm. Well, we could first count the tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Then count the ones. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76. When we are representing place value drawings, you can see that we use the tens stick just like we did in our dot drawing. And then a ones cube just like we did in our dot drawing as well. But when we get to 100, we need a quicker method as well. So we can use a square to represent 100. So if I were interpreting this picture here, I have one hundreds block, one ten stick, and one ones cube for, a num for the number 111. Let's try some more. So how could I show 76 without dots? Well, last time I circled 10 dots and then again and again and seven times. So I wonder if now I could just show my tens by drawing a long rectangle like this. That works for me because I remember they all kind of looked like a rectangle once you circled those 10 dots. Yeah, I think you're right. So I'm going to go ahead and draw seven of those. Right now I'm at 30 because they each equal 10, 40, 50, 60, and 70. But now, what, what do you have an idea for next? I think you should just do circles to represent your ones. Okay, just like this? Just like that. Awesome, that looks like 77 tens and six ones. How can you represent a hundred without using dots? Hmm. Oh, I remember we had that big square to represent our hundreds. So we could just draw a big square to represent our hundreds block. That looks awesome. 
make a place value drawing for 123. Mrs. Suzwitz, I think that these new third graders are really smart. Do you think that they could do this one on their own? I think so. Third graders, pause the video and complete a place value drawing for 123 on the paper with you. When you're done, you can resume the video. Mrs. Suzwitz, I noticed that this time, instead of drawing skinny rectangles, you just drew lines. Is that okay? I think it's okay because it's still representing the 10 sticks, but then I'm not getting it confused with my 100s block. And it helped me do it quicker. Mm, I think that's a really good idea. So third graders, your place value drawing that you did should look like this. You have 100 block, two ten sticks, and three ones cubes. One hundred twenty-three. Hmm, I wonder if they could challenge them. Do you think that they could do a dot drawing now that they've done a place value drawing? Definitely. All right then third graders, pause that video now and when you finish you may resume. Awesome job, Mrs. Suzwitz. I really like that you put spaces in between the different place values because it really helped me to see 100 plus two tens, which I know is 20, plus three. All right, third graders, at one of your stations today, you may be doing this independent work. As I look through it, I am confident that you will be able to do it because I see some dot drawings and some place value drawings. If you do not feel confident at this point, go ahead and rewind the video and watch the beginning part again. Really quick, I am going to read the directions so that if you need help with how to sound out some of the words, you have it there for you. I'm going to put a star next to the directions that I'm reading first. Write the number for each dot drawing. So for numbers one and two, you're going to look at the dot drawings and you are going to write the number in standard form on the blue lines underneath. Your next set of directions are to write the number for each place value drawing. Numbers three and four have place value drawings that aren't on the dot paper. You need to write the numbers that are represented using standard form on the blue lines under those. Oh, sorry, that's for four, three, four, five, and six. And then your last set of directions are to make a place value drawing for each number. So you have the number 86 and you have the number 587. You need to represent those numbers using a place value drawing. There's one more thing that you might need to know for your independent work today, and that's the thousands bar. Okay, it's called a thousands bar because it's a column of hundred boxes. So you see that this is a 10 by 10 box right here, and we're going to make a column of them. That means we're going to stack them right on top of each other, and that's going to look like this. That represents a thousand or sorry, 1,000. So if you had 2,000, then you would need to draw two of those 1,000 bars. So Ms. Anderson, I'm thinking that if I don't have the dots, what shape could I use to represent a thousands bar? 
because well, I already use a square for the hundreds, bo hundreds block. Well, that sure looks like a rectangle to me, but I think you would have to make sure that it's bigger than the hundreds square because, I mean, 1,000 seems a lot bigger than 100 to me. Good point. So when, we're, when I'm representing a thousands bar, I'm going to draw a rectangle, and if I have hundreds, it'll be a smaller square. Okay, this is your assignment or class activity that you might need to use a thousands bar for. And again, we're going to read through those directions for you. Your first set of directions are to write the number for each place value drawing. So again, for 9 and 10, you have a place value drawing. You need to read it or interpret it and write that number in standard form on the lines below. The next set of directions for numbers 11 and 12 are to make a drawing for each number. So for 11, you need to represent the number 2,368 using a place value drawing. For number 12, you need to represent the number 5,017 using a place value drawing. Your last set of directions on this page are to write the numbers in word form. So you have numbers 13, 14, 15, and 16. The number is written in word form. You need to write it in standard form. So for 13, you have the number, the word 82. You need to write that number in standard form. I'm not going to read 14, 15, and 16 because I'd like you to try to read those word names on your own. So we're going to move on to that second target, target today about multi-digit numbers. There are two ways to write the number in expanded form. As you look at 1,263, you can see that it's broken apart into 1,000 plus 200 plus 60 plus 3. And that's called what form again? Expanded form. Yeah. And when I think of expanding, expanding kind of means stretching something out. So I notice that when it's in standard form, the number is smaller, closer together. But when I put it into expanded form, it's stretched out. And then there's a lot of words underneath, and I'm wondering, is that supposed to be word form? That's not word form because it has numbers in front of it. I also noticed that it has equal signs and plus signs, so that reminds me, this must be just another way to write expanded form. Yep. One way to read this number is 1,263. Do you know another way to read it? Hmm, 1,263. Let's focus on the tens. What if we want to think of 1,263 as being made up of only tens and ones? How many tens are there? in 1,263 in total. Ooh, if I was asked this question, I would think right away, well, I know that there's three ones, so I'm just gonna get those ones out of the way. And then, hmm, well, I know this is the tens place, but if I don't have a hundreds place and I don't have a thousands place, then would that mean that there's 126 tens? It would, good job. Finally, focus on the ones. What if we want to think of 1,263 as being made up of only ones? How many ones are there altogether? Mm, well, if there's no other place values that we're considering, I think that there's 1,263 ones. That's a lot. Can you imagine having to draw 1,263 circles?